we heard from uh, Brandon and George that the offense may have won today's practice. Is that is that true? <sighs> offensive guys, boy, I'll tell you what. <laughs> we won today. So let's not get that uh, misunderstood. Defense won today. They had a good couple plays, you know, especially, you know, Purdy back out there ripping it. Looks great. Exactly what you would like to see out of the offense. Uh, it was a hard fought battle. I'd say. Bi-week practice, you might imagine that it wouldn't be hard fought because there's nothing to prepare for this weekend. But I mean, did you, you know, personally make sure that there was intensity so that those type, those guys might say something like that after a practice? I'm always trying to stir the pot. I'm always trying to get the juices going. You know, before the practice starts, you start planting seeds. You know, and each guy, hey Brandon, we're gonna see. You know, uh, George, I don't know. It's, Bro, you've been away for a while. I don't know. Playing C, man, you know, and then that's how you create that pet competitive atmosphere out there. So it's all fun and games. Had some pretty uh, notable coaches step down this weekend. And when Bill Walsh was here, he used to say, you can coach for a place for 10 years and everybody's heard everything and then you, get, you should move on. You've been with Kyle for six years now. I'm curious, what's he done to keep things fresh? Is he a lot? Much the same as the guy when you got here. Does he do things differently? How has he adjusted, adapted? I mean, he's he's for sure the same guy, um, just better. Every year he's gotten better as a coach, just like he expects all of his players to get better. Um, his big thing is you're either getting better or you're getting worse. And uh, with Kyle, just being so true and authentic to himself, and having had the experiences that we've had as a team, and you know, losing in the big games. Starting to having slow starts to seasons, you know, he always looks and reflects back, so reflects back on those prior years and like those scars that you earn. It's like, all right, how do we get better from that? Like, what 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 did we learn from that to, in order to be better going forward? So, every year going into every season, there's always something new that we got to like work on and get better at to attain what we're trying to do here. You know what I'm saying? And so that's that's something that he's done a great job of every year, just continuing to get better as a coach and, and a leader for us. How do those scars? Talk about how do they help you this time of year sort of you know get ready for another another player run? Yeah, man, I mean you, you you always remember those moments. I think it's important during those times like last year in Philly and you see the confetti coming down, you see the, them with their hats and t shirts on the stage, they're happy and you're standing there, you're watching it all happen. I could put myself right back there in this moment. And the the, the part that sucks is like you can't just blink and you're right back into having an opportunity to go back and do it again. You know what I'm saying? And so you start from ground one, OTAs, mini camp, training camp, you know, you gotta you gotta build the team back up again. And it feels like just yesterday we were doing that, but you blink and we're here. Like it's the start of playoffs and you're here, you're here right back where you wanna be with an opportunity to go do something special with the right type of guys. And uh, I think that's what the scars are for. You remember those moments, so it's like how can I not give my all to this? How can I not make sure it's everything to me, my teammates, obviously the coaches, and that's that's what those scars are for. Fred, the way you guys lost, the unique way you guys lost last year, did that provide any sort of different type of offseason feel? I mean, yeah, it was kind of mixed emotions, right? Because it felt like we never even had a chance to get going. We never had a chance to really like feel like we could compete in that game. Like we. Don't get me wrong, like in the moment we're feeling like, man, we can, we can still do this. We could do anything, like especially the way that we finished last season. Hadn't hadn't lost a game in forever. And it didn't matter if Brock went down or Josh went down. We were like, man, defensively, we're thinking we just need, oh, how, many, how many touchdowns on defense do we need to score? Like that's the mindset in that moment. And then you look back afterwards, like we never had a chance, you know? And so it's like, just give us an opportunity where we're able to compete in that situation again. And, and then we'll see. Fred, obviously there's still some faces missing in practice, but is it kind of energizing to get like Eric Armstead, Jair Brown, Henry Thomas, George Odom, et cetera, back today? Yeah, so good. Uh, so good to see those guys out there in uniform. We talked about a guy like Eric and how, how big he is for us uh, and what we do just to see him in the uniform again today was great. Uh, Jair being back. So it's just good to get everybody back out there moving around so that when the time comes next week and we need them, that everybody's ready to go. Fred, you, you guys have been banging heads since July. I thought maybe your best collective game was off the bye, the Jacksonville game. How do you feel with the rest, and how much do you think that rest is going to help you guys in the division round? Yeah, it's really helpful. I, I feel great. You know, I think the rest is much needed, and you talk about 
Um, a lot of guys didn't didn't play many snaps in this past game either, so it's almost like you're taking two weeks of just uh, letting the body recover and then mentally getting your mind right for what we got ahead. And um, I do think it'll be advantageous. And you, you mentioned it after that bye week in, during the season, we we came out flying, and we got to make sure we do the same thing this time. Chase Chase Young might have an expanded role here in the first two games. What have you seen from him since he got here in late October, early November? Yeah, I think just came in and was exactly the type of guy that we um, that we want, you know, and, and being a 49er, and he bought right into what we were doing. You know, you talk about he, he already had it ingrained in him, like little things like running to the football, playing with that violence, like the stuff that, you, that we asked our guys to do, and on top of the talent and the ability that he has, and he's just continued to get better. Um, you know, and I think he's bought into his role too. Like he's not, he's not like a me guy. It's like, oh, this is my bad year, this, this, that. Like he wants to win. He wants to win a ring as bad as anybody here. And so I'm really excited for him uh, in the postseason. Eric Armstead has said that he plays his best football in the playoffs. Obviously, that's the goal of everybody on the team. But what do you see from him on these home stretches when you're in the postseason and he's right in front of you? I think he plays his best ball year round. You know, and I think. Uh, you want to be a guy known for being consistent, uh, no matter what the situation is. But of course, you want your you want your best uh, ball to be played in, at, in this moment. And the way that you do that is you continue to do things that that you've done right to get you this, to this point. You know, you don't have to do something out of out of the ordinary. All of a sudden, be playoff, you know, such and such. It's like just do the things that have brought you success up to this point. And that's the things that are going to be. It's the little things, you know. So a lot of teams they lose games this time of year. It's not about winning. It's about not losing the game. So. We just got to be on top of the details, those little things. I think is what's going to carry us to where we want to go. Uh, George talked about how it playoff, about playoff intensity, and how you know in the regular season you might see a guy like a pass rusher, like oh he, he only turns it on on third down, or, or you know this guy doesn't try this, you know. But, but then in the playoffs, everyone is into it. He, as he said, everyone's playing like Max Crosby. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> that was his line. Uh, yeah. So. I guess, does that resonate with you? And is it a much higher level um, than a regular you know, three-game game? Uh, it's for sure a much a much higher level in terms of it's win or go home. This isn't a seven-game series. You know, it's not the best team that wins the, the trophy at the end. You know, in basketball, you usually got a, a few chances to get it right when you've got the best players. But it doesn't matter if you got the best team. I feel like we've had the best team the last three, four years, and we still haven't gotten a ring. It wasn't about us having the best team. It's about how good can you play in those three hours that you're allotted out there. Um, and that's the team that usually uh, is happy at the end of the year. And so the guys that turn it on for the playoffs, I don't really, uh, that's not something that I can truly like respect fully. I feel like if you're just not turning it on, what were you all the way through from all the, you know, the 18, 18 weeks prior to that? So, you know, We'll see. I think our guys have made the right stuff. We've, we've been going at it for the last 18, 19 weeks, and uh, we're made of the right stuff. We just got to make sure we play our best ball for three hours. Fred, will you be Last watching time. the games impartially, or will you be having any rooting interest, maybe for Danico, but other, maybe Mike, but other than that, any any impartiality? Yeah, no, I'm uh, I'm excited to watch. Just as a, as a football fan, I'm excited to watch and obviously seeing who we play, but um, I hope everybody loses. <laughs> and then who knows? And then we won't play. Thanks, Fred. Thanks, Nick will be next.